going on you guys? Motorcycle Boss again. So this time we're doing a K&N air filter. I have one in my ZX-10 that we're going to be swapping out. The disassembly process to get to it may be different on your bike, so consult your service manual for exactly how to go about that. Um, but once we get to the air filter, if you have a K&N, the process will be the same as far as how to clean it and how to oil it and then uh, putting it back in the bike. So let's get started. All right, so in order for us to get to the air filter, the air filter is in here under the gas tank. I personally like to remove the gas tank. I feel like it makes things a little bit easier. Um, you guys do you though. Every bike is gonna be different as far as where the air filter is located and how to access it. Refer to your service manual and as far as how to disassemble everything to get to that point. But uh, this is me just getting to the air filter. Okay, now the only reason I didn't explain step by step how to get to this point, most sport bikes from 600 cc's and up are going to have this similar configuration. Uh, cruisers are normally going to have the air filter on the side of the tank on the right hand side, and like the Ninja 300 will have have it underneath the uh, the rider seat. But every bike is going to be different, so uh, you won't be able to follow exactly what I did because your bike may have a different procedure for getting to this point. So just refer to your service manual, it'll explain everything in detail. So once you're at this point and you can see these four tubes, these are called velocity stacks. And if anything drops in here and it gets inside your engine, good luck trying to fish it out. And if you can't fish it out, you're taking, you're dropping the motor and you're doing basically a, a top end rebuild. So to prevent that from happening, I'm going to immediately, once these are exposed, take some uh, shop rags and just stuff it in there in each one so that way nothing can fall in into the engine. This is going to be always, 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 if you get to this point or even further in these four ports are exposed, always fill, cover these with a rag to make sure nothing gets in here because if anything gets in there you're in trouble. So. Now, this is the air filter that we've been trying to track down, and this one just pulls right up. We got the gasket right there. We'll just seat that, want that back in there. And now let's check out, this is the clean side, and it looks very pristine. And that is the dirty side. Up close look at the air filter on the clean side. And as you can see, everything's pretty pristine. And now we'll take a look at the dirty side. And right away, you can tell this thing has been put through the ringer. Now this has been after 4,000 miles of riding in the desert. 
in Las Vegas. That is the state or the, the city in which I live. So probably every 3,000 miles I should be going. Depending on your area will really dictate um, when you should be doing this. But every 3,000 miles is standard. But I just went a little overdue on this one. So good thing about KNN air filters, we'll be able to clean all this crap out and reuse it. So let's run over to the next part. Now, there's a very particular way that you're going to clean this off. It's actually very easy. You want to use K&N's proprietary cleaning solvent for this, but I feel like it's a little bit of a waste simply because soap and water do the exact same job and you don't have to get some proprietary solution. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna get some water, fill up a little spray bottle. We're just gonna get a little bit of soap. You don't need to put a lot. I like to give it a little shake. And then, make sure it works. You're gonna have it on the mist setting, kind of like that. And we're gonna get both sides and you want to get this nice and soaking wet. You don't want to use high pressure because that has the potential to damage the filter. Just make sure you get in every nook and cranny. You'll even turn it around. Careful on this side, you're not trying to force any of this stuff deeper inside of the filament. You just want to get it wet. So that's why it's important to keep on the mist setting. But you want to get this as soaked as you can. So now you're going to leave it with the dirty side down. You're gonna leave everything to penetrate for about 10 minutes and then come back. All right, so it's been 10 minutes. Now, we're gonna get some about room temperature water and we're going to go from the clean side through towards the dirty side. If you flip it over and do it the other way, you can push some dirt towards the clean side and we don't want that. You also don't wanna use incredibly high pressure water because you can damage the filament. Or you're going to continue to do this until it's clean on both sides. And make sure that you don't see any soap bubbles at all. So just take your time with this part. And if you feel like you want to, you can repeat uh, what we just did. Spraying it with soapy water, letting it sit, rinsing it out. You're gonna repeat that as many times as you feel necessary. I found that I've never needed to do it more than once, even for how bad this filter was. Let me just check the other side. You wanna make sure there isn't any particulates that are kind of hanging out. Like, I see something that's kind of stuck in there. So I'm seeing that there's a couple things chunks that are sticking in so let's use a little pick try and get those out so like you see that is really some nasty stuff that's stuck in there so just go through each pleat and make sure you dig out everything that you can so I just finished rinsing this out. Uh, after picking through everything, just rinsed it out one more time. Now you just want to shake any excess water out of it. And do not blow pressurized air through this because you could damage the filament. This is supposed to air dry 
And uh, depending on temperature, it may take three, four hours, or it may take just one or two, it just depends. Uh, probably good to just leave this to sit overnight. And uh, what I like to do is I like to set it in front of a chair, or set it on a chair in front of a fan, and uh, have the fan blowing on the dirty side. And then uh, once it's good and dry, then you can apply the lubricant to it. All right, so now that the air filter is completely dry, we're going to use K&N's air filter oil. And these do have to be oiled. So now that we cleaned it, we removed all the old oil as well as all the dirt and grime. So we're gonna use this to re-oil it. Make sure you apply this on the dirty side of the filter, as in this is the side of the filter that the air will hit first before it goes into the engine. You're only going to apply this oil on this side. Now we're gonna get our oil and we're going to run across these. We're going to put, try to put an even amount across uh, the entirety of the filter. Should be, see if I can get a good view of that. I'm just going to repeat this across the whole filter, only on the dirty side. Okay, so now that I've finished oiling this whole side, you're going to want to let it sit with the dirty side up for about 10 to 15 minutes, so that way you can let the capillary action pull the oil through the, to the other side. You don't want to apply oil on this side, because you may have your mass airflow sensor sitting above it and as the air is going through you don't want it to contaminate your mass airflow sensor and then making your air fuel ratio mess up. So let it sit uh, dirty side up for about 10 to 15 minutes and then ch uh, check to see if you have even coverage on both sides. If the other side is showing that it's a little splotchy and blotchy, try and apply a little bit more oil on the opposite side to those particular areas. Let it sit for about another five to 10 minutes and until you have even coverage. So while your air filter is sitting, if you look on underneath the filter or on the, on the other side, the first section of your, uh, fil your air box, you're gonna notice there's all this dirt and crap that's in there. So I'm just gonna use a little degreaser. I'm gonna go inside, clean all that up in the meantime. Now the air filter's done, I'm gonna make sure that ceiling gasket is good. Drop it back in. I'm gonna make sure we pull these out. Make sure, take a look, there's nothing in there at all. I'm not seeing nothing, which is good. Make sure there's nothing around these and that it's fairly clean. And once that's good to go, you're ready to reassemble, put everything back together. So it's as simple as that, guys. Uh, sorry I didn't explain in detail how to disassemble and reassemble the bike to get to the air filter. The whole point of this video was to explain how to clean and how to re-oil a K&N air filter or any other air filter that may be similar to it. So I hope I was able to get that point across to you and uh, the video wasn't too boring. But it's pretty simple. Uh, I recommend, depending on where you're at, if you're in a desert like me, probably doing it about every 3,000 miles is what you should be doing before it gets really gunked up like you saw uh, in this video. But I hope if this was able to help you, you guys hit that like button, it definitely helps me out. Put a comment, let me know how I'm doing. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, definitely subscribe. Well, the whole point of my channel is to help people save money and keep their bikes away from the Steelership. So if you liked it, please let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video.